And we're here definitely to talk about um, relationships because we know that we're entering a period of the U tide, and many of times, uh, many of the times, characters like others, not me. You know, we create a certain situation where we don't want to expand. As a result of that, we create some bubrujas, some hunya situation. You know, atmosphere. Uh, in the home or sometimes in the relationship to make sure that uh, we create a certain fi fix uh, we don't want to spend. Then we go out and go and do all the things. But, you know, it's a period of love, etc. And Bernice Abubedo is here. Mm -hmm. Christmas is a period, and we're going to have um, a regular on the show, sure. um, life coach Amos Kevin Anna helping us do the discussions. Have you had uh, a witness or had some experience of, you know, it's a time for Christmas, a period of the U tide, and then you know, one partner or perhaps somebody at the home tries to create the atmosphere. You know, you've heard all that. No, no, I, <laughs> you I have, have to make sure I, that they I have heard they sort that. themselves out of responsibility. You know. Okay, well, I haven't experienced that, thankfully. <laughs> but I think more importantly, um, it also it's also a time where people try and you know meet family, people you haven't seen for a very long time. And usually, you know, Christmas is, is a time of giving and it's a time where we remember Christ. So sometimes people use the opportunity to patch up, you know, relationships and all that. So it, it's, it's diverse how people use Christmas to, to either destroy their relationships or build <laughs> it. So we they destroy within the period and amend or mend it after. Some do that. And some also try to mend their broken relationships within, the within Christmas. Because, yeah. you know, it's a more relaxed time. You can, you can use Jesus as your, you know, <laughs> as your bait <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, get, sure. to get your partner to forgive you. you know, or you can use the excitement in the season. So someone, for example, would take their partner out on a dinner or something oh. for Christmas and try to looks make amends and all that. So it, it, it's very diverse when you talk about Christmas and relationships. There are a lot of things you can talk about. But most important, uh, importantly, we spoke to one child uh, when we were promoting our party in the park. And he said he's excited about Christmas because his, his father can have time for him. It's, it's something he always looks forward to, really, because daddy's not at home, daddy's always at work, he comes in late. But when it's Christmas, yeah, we can go for a picnic, yeah. we can have fun. Because so. it's, a, it's a holiday period, too, exactly. and, and, and the head. And you'll be having some other discussions uh, after well. we have the most Yes, yes, discussion. we'll be talking about road safety. Roland, I don't know, yesterday the traffic was very, very intense. I mean, we see that a lot. Um, maybe because yesterday was a Thursday and today is a Friday. Usually you see the traffic around 23rd, 24th. Um, but yesterday it was, it was something else. And I saw people report on social media two different accident scenes. And they looked quite gory. There was one at Adenta and the other at Laboni Junction, where this truck had run into the drain, the open drain. It looked, it looked very bad. So we just want to be talking about safety. You know, you're very important to us, and we don't want to lose you, especially in Christmas or during the Christmas season. So we'll be telling you how to stay safe, guys, uh, on the roads. Yeah. So that's oh. what we'll be doing, Roland. No, and you'll be doing something else. Yes, yeah? uh, we're talking about checking your finances. The you know, yeah, usually mm. Christmas is all the time. We have to go to <laughs> Uncle Ebo's white play, go and listen to Amos Caviana telling us about all the good Christmas. things and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and then we forget that. Charlie. And you get paid earlier. Yeah. You know, so by 31st and 1st, Charlie, we're discussing in a... And then... Oh, uh, And then you have, if, you have, if you have a responsibility to look after children and the home, it means that you have to pay for school fees and you've forgotten. Ah. Spent all the money, it's, uh, so we we're, we're going to somebody who is going to guide us mm. financially as to how we have to plan ourselves. Because I mean, this time I'm not picking on my my calls, anything about Roland, Charlie, Yeshua, and I'm gonna say yeah. Interesting. That. That'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a good one to have. So we'll take a quick breather. We'll be back in a minute to have that conversation on how to use Christmas, you know, to help your relationship. <laughs> GRA requests you to be a good citizen, 
pay your taxes, to enable government provide free SHS, good schools, and fund the National Health Insurance Scheme. Taxpayers are nation builders. Hashtag our taxes are future. Thanks for staying here on the AM show. It's a Friday and, you know, we're lighting things up a bit. And it's time to discuss relationship. Yes, and today it's not your usual man-wife. Uh, maybe you may take that turn, but not the usual marriage, dating. We're talking about the larger uh, family and talking about how you can use Christmas to, you know, patch up relationships, boost your relationship. I'm sure you know by now uh, Christmas is all about love, but how do families gel and create a bond during the season? Well, I've got life coach Amos Kevin Annan, and he's a regular, and a lot of you love him, Well, I love him as well, and it's good every time to talk to him about relationships. Good to have you. Good to Merry see you Christmas. again. Afri Shapa. Yes. Amen. Afri say we'd all be here. Yeah. And uh, we'll be we'll talking be, about this. We'll and maybe looking gorgeous. Oh, yes. As always. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and you too. But l let's talk about Christmas. Yeah. And how to take advantage of the season. I'm sure by now everybody in, in my office knows that I love Christmas. It's my, my best season of the year. I don't awesome. know why. It just does something to me. I just mm. love it when I hear the carols and see all the right. lights okay. and everybody's more relaxed and, you know, there's not a lot of tension. But while we're doing all the things we do, how can we develop our relationships? Or let me put it this way, how can we take advantage of, of the, the season. season to either make amends for certain things we've done in our relationship or use it to even build it if we don't have anything to uh, correct? Well, thank you very much. I think I would say compliments of the season to our viewers around the world and uh, to you yourself and your Thank team you. your crew members those behind the camera and never get to see on the, <laughs> on the screens <laughs> um, seasons and festive occasions have tended to be period where people review their commitments and the review either would be leading to a change of mind wherein they withdraw Curtsies, protocols, and all the nice things they extended to you previous. Or it will be a time to consolidate what has already existed. Even for others still, it will be time to forecast. Forecast new, new ideas, new, new thoughts, new plans, new initiatives mm. um, for themselves. So it's a season that we all need to pay attention to these three areas of our lives. What are some of the things I need to pull off from? What are some of the things that are there that I need to protect? What are some of the new initiatives I need to now project into uh, the future? So it's a, it's a good time. Unfortunately, it's just around the same time that also criminal motivated minds would also look for the person who is most vulnerable in the society. Uh, yesterday I was on your uh, portal mm. and I saw a young man who had been arrested mm. and it said that he was uh, into Sakawa or Just something. Just across the street. Across the street. I noticed by the pictures I mm. noticed was a terrain I was familiar with. And that's quite disconcerting because this is not a season to be criminally motivated, you see. Uh, for me, this year, 2018, I mean, moving into 2018, um, I'm thinking that the season should be a period to challenge the status quo. 
especially where the status quo is not helpful, it's not productive, it's not giving you the space to be human, it's not giving you the opportunity to, to fledge and, and to be somebody who uh, would be seen as a human being mm. um, in your own um, rights and space. Why do I say challenge the status quo? The announcement, or what is called in theology the annunciation of the arrival of a newborn king, mm -hmm. threatened an already established monarchy. True. What are some of the institutions, some of the things that have stayed for so long but are unproductive and helpful um, and should not see the next move? Mm. Elder, so um, I mean, I'm just imagining a young man listening or a young lady listening and say, okay, I've really messed up mm. in my relationship. There are a lot of highlights that, I mean, unfortunately, I regret, but I, I can't change them. Yeah. How do I take advantage of the season? What can I do? I All mean, right. you don't want to, you don't want to uh, look or sound patronizing that you're just, like I, I, I said, with, I mentioned to Roland earlier, that you're just using Jesus as... Uh, as a bait or as a cover-up to, 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 to fix your relationship. But what do I do? How do I take advantage of the season to correct the mistakes I've okay. made in my relationship? It's especially, all... sorry to cut no, in, no especially with the family setting, not only with uh, the uh, uh, romantic relationships, no. but generally as, yeah. as a family. All right. For instance, you notice that there is a gap between you and family folks. That's a good season. It's a season of goodwill not ill will. And therefore, whilst we do away with ill will, we perpetuate a cycle of goodwill. So you need to make amends. How do you make amends? You sit back and review. How was it before? What are we aspiring to have? And what it is that used to exist which was good, and what we are aspiring to have which is the best, should give you a reason to not take some steps. OK, so what steps must I take to reach out to this individual? Um, not to go and tell them I'm wrong or he's wrong or she's wrong, no. But to extend an olive branch to them, peace. Because it was one of the messages mm. that resonated, peace be with you. Mm. Now, it is in this season of peace be with you, and it says that goodwill amongst men. men. Okay, so there's a need for every one of us to review our situation and say, where did I fall short? Mm. To whom must I make amends? Who must I forgive? It's also a season for clemency. Mm. So let go some pain. I said to somebody um, on, on Tuesday that bitterness does not produce a better person. Okay. Now, so if you are in a state of bitterness, bitterness will not produce you into a better you. Mm. So if you want a better you, a better version of you, then do away with the bitterness. Mm. Okay. Now, if you're a family person who is itinerant and most traveled all the time, this is time to also make amends. So it's time for relaxation. So you look for Uncle Ebo White's the, play. The way you're smiling, I, 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 are, you, are you that kind of a person? Do you, oh, do, yes, you yes, travel yes, a yes, lot? Yes. Uh, I travel a lot, mm. but I'm making time for my family. Um, for the last two days, I've been with my girls. I had the privilege of addressing Rotary at uh, Golden Tulip, and I took them along with me. Okay. We, we had breakfast together uh, with my girls, and then thereafter we went to have lunch again together, which was something which is uncommon. It's mm. not too regular. Mm. Sometimes mm. we get lunch together, but not breakfast together and mm. lunch together. So those are some of the little, little things we can do to enliven the relationships amongst ourselves as family folks. So, so this is this is a perfect idea. I'm sure some of you are excited. You got this free of charge. I'm going <laughs> to try to tease out some more. So, I mean, practically, what what, what can we do? You've just given us one mm. tip. You could make time, do yeah. something that's not common. Yeah. You know, let the let whoever it is that you want to feel good this season experience something they've never done before. But some people will always say, "Well, but I don't have money to do that." So, on on the practical side. How, how do we, you know, how do we do it, really? Well, I, I think that when I hear people say, I don't have money to do this or that, I ask them, what do you consider most important? Because oftentimes we make savings and allowances for things that we consider important. 
people spend on things they don't notice they are spending. Or sometimes impulsive spend, spending becomes their lot. So there's a need for, if you have not done that, well, that's unfortunate. But I think moving forward into the future, you could start doing something mm -hmm. in this respect. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always the quantum of money expended on an activity, but the thought, the goodwill mm. that is accompanying an action. Mm. So if it is that you don't have money to spend, you can have a time out together, sit at the beach. It's a nice place to sit. If you don't find any beach anywhere, come to Pram Pram area, because that's where I mostly go. And you can, get, you can get a place to put your feet in the water and sit, you know, at the shore. Let the tidal waves mm. come and go mm. back, come and go back, and relax. It's mm. therapeutic in very, itself. Very. And I was just going to say that I think sometimes we underestimate the, the power of just bonding. Sometimes you, I, I, I feel that you don't really need the money sometimes. You just need to be with the person, let them That's feel it. loved. That's it. That's and, it. And, and we're going to be opening the phone lines very soon for some of you who, who've been taking advantage of the season to share with us how you do it. Maybe someone can learn yeah. uh, something from you. Or if you're not too sure how to go about it and you have any questions, uh, you, you can ask them and we sure would help you with some answers. So, some have actually taken the decision to travel out. Yeah, but when you're traveling out, I'm told now the weather is very cold, it's extremely very cold. cold. And more time. expensive. Yeah, and for many of the visitations that we do, we need to really think through the weather conditions as well because you may go and come back with some condition you don't mm. want. Mm. Uh, you spend a lot of time dealing with it. Um, otherwise, there are very good sceneries in, in Ghana, a lot of places to visit. A friend of mine decided to drive during the holidays through out towns and villages for his children to see how life is That's beautiful. on the other side. That's I very mean, beautiful. If you're stuck in Accra or a big city, you don't see the rural folks and how it is that life pans out for them. So there will be the need if you have a car, you can drive around town. I call it the power of presence. You know, I'm present mm. and my presence is felt. So my absence will be noticed. Mm. So this season should be a season where your presence is felt and your absence equally is noticed. Mm. Mm. I'll quickly open the phone lines, but mm. let's talk about balance now. Because okay. you see, during this season, yeah. uh, you have a lot of invitations. So yeah. uh, someone's inviting you to their party, yeah. uh, um, um, a work get-together, mm. something. And you also have commitments at yeah. home. And if you're not careful, you, you realize that even though the season offers a lot yeah. for you to build relationships, spend time with the family, you may end up not doing that. How do we balance the two? I mean, mm -hmm. so that you're not carried away by the season and lose out yeah. on the season's benefits. I mean, your call will be to prioritize. You should be able to um, make a list of which activities are more important than others. For instance, it's a hangout, which you always do with the boys' boys or the girls' girls. Now, that hangout could be sacrificed for an invitation to, say, a friend's anniversary. OK. OK. Around this time, there will be a lot of um, final funeral rites mm. and anniversaries weddings. of people, weddings. People are taking decisions to marry now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, breasting the tape yeah. before the year <laughs> grinds to a halt. <laughs> so you got to do an assessment of the situations or the invitations you have. And then you say, okay, this one is something I have been doing all the time. We only continue a process that I've been. But this one is only one off. So you elevate the one off above what is regular or routine. That's very important. Then having done that, it's an exercise of will. You see, sometimes we create the impression we are helpless. But none of us is helpless because we have a sovereign will that gives us the capacity and the power to make choice and to mm. take a decision. Which decision we must not delegate to another. Sometimes the decision will require cooperation with people in the family. 
So it's not only a one-sided decision-making process. Mm. So consultative processes need to be triggered. Which consultative processes? You should be liberal to say, it is not only my word mm. that must persist, okay. but our consensus building process mm. must lead to a decision. Interesting. Well, you can call us on 0302 0302-2111-692. 0302-2111-692. 0302-2111-692. 0302-2111-692. So while we wait for the, for the phone lines to open, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking that maybe if you have a lot of things to do, um, like you shared, you can take the family along, you know, exactly. it doesn't hurt, give them an experience. Sometimes yeah. um, it's an opportunity for, for us to also get to know what our parents are. I remember the first time my father mm. took me out. Or, on a date. Or, or on a, on a, you know, it wasn't a date, it was, it was a preaching session, but okay. he said, come along. It, it okay, so so it was a preaching date. Yes, yeah, so it was a date. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it feels good. You, you you feel like, okay, I'm being thought of. You know, as children, yeah, there are a lot considered. of things that matter. Yeah. And just the fact that, you know, he just said, oh, that's my daughter. Yeah. I came along with my daughter. It, it, it adds something, you know. So for those of you parents who will still be engaged during the season, why not? You can take your children along. Maybe take your wife along too. It's been a while, hasn't it? But as you do that also, mm -hmm. you need to bear in mind the personality type of your child. Or okay. your spouse. Okay. Not everybody wants to be showcased to the public. Mm. Others want to be at the back mm. bench. And so you also need to pay attention to those. That's um, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can hear our phones ringing. I'm sure we'd uh, yeah, have yeah. people calling in, in shortly. Mm. Uh, but, but let's talk about how, apart from building relationships with ourselves, how we can make other people feel loved. I know a lot yeah. of people do a lot of things this season. They support a lot of organizations, mm. support a lot of deprived people. But sometimes I get the sense that we may not be doing it too well um, in the sense that we just go and just dump you know, the things on the people and just drop things for them. It's a good motive, but is there a way we can do it so that it doesn't only become an act, but it affects the, the well-being, it affects yeah. the people's mm. perception to life and, and, and how they really appreciate how others treat them. You know, I, I suggested respectfully to those who have listened to me this week at different meetings that it is time to do something which is not the regular everyday mm. activity. For instance, you're driving at a traffic intersection and you notice that these boys who clean your windscreen, they are there. These are boys at the margins of society. How do we bring them to the center? Mm. It's a form of a challenging the established status quo. Because mm. the status quo is that they are helpless. There's nothing that they, they look forward mm. to. And they are in a state of desperation. How can you remedy that? So you have some packs in your car and you hand out to them. It's not patronizing, as it were, the habit of being there, but the seizing is such that it's a seizing of goodwill. Okay. Mm. I, I'll have you hold on because I've got Mildred Mensa. Right. She's calling us from Takade. Hello, Mildred. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Good I'm good fine. Morning. And yourself? I'm doing great. Thanks for calling. What do you have to share with us, Mildred? I'm good. When you. I just want uh, the facilitator to advise me on this issue. Mm. Mildred, before you continue, can you, sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback. Can you kindly reduce the volume on your television set, please? Okay, sounds, sounds better now, yes. Can I continue? Sure you can. Please do. Okay. If you have a, ma a man who always wants to spend Christmas with a family, like living with his nuclear family and spending Christmas with his family, the extended family, what, 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 what do you have to do? Mm. That, that, that's, that's an interesting one. Thank you, Mildred. We'll get you some answers shortly. So here's a situation where 
I've been with the Luca family all the year. Okay, so I'm thinking that Christmas, let me go home to the village. Let me spend time with the extended mm. family. But looks like Mildred is like, how do I deal with that? Oh, well, the question I'll ask such a man is, what prevents you from taking your family along? Mm. Is there any inhibition? Is there any prohibition? Because the prohibition will come from them and the inhibition will come from you. Mm. Let's review that. Then secondly, for a person who is having this person as your spouse, there's the need to have a conversation. Sit around the family table and discuss your concerns. Raise the issues in a respectful, courteous fashion. Mm. Don't be hostile, don't be aggressive, don't show abrasive posture because that then will raise a potential conflict. Mm. Raise your concerns respectfully to your spouse. Let him explain to you why you usually get sacrificed around this time. Because as she described it, Mildred paints the picture that is almost recurring. Mm. If it's recurring, it's time to talk about it. Mm. But, but is it, others may want to look at it in the sense of, D don't be selfish. She's been with you the whole year. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that. You see, mm. uh, I won't pronounce it, on the fact yes. that they're being selfish. Because we don't know the details. Because the details have yeah. not been supplied. But at least we have a strand that says that this is recurring. Now, the recurring nature of this is putting your primary relationship, which is your spouse and children, in a state of disturbance. You need to remedy that situation by paying attention to what they bring to you. Respectful attention. And it's, it's important that we posture ourselves that way. Now, those who are also conveying this information should also know how to handle the information mm -hmm. because it can be explosive. And will create a big roadblock where it is that, well, okay, I'm gone. And then they leave. So you lose on both sides. They go and they are not happy, so they won't contact you. And you'll be struggling to get their attention, yet he goes there and he needs to return home. Now, when he returns home, what's going to be the atmosphere mm -hmm. at home? Mm -hmm. So there's a need for you to be tactful and diplomatic if it is that you're going to get a, a, the attention of this individual. If that fails, perhaps you need to go through a mediator, somebody they respect, somebody who has a favorable disposition before them so that they can mediate in the process and, and draw their attention to it. Sometimes people are oblivious of what it is they are doing until their attention is drawn to it. And, and the weight of what they're doing and its implications for them is brought to bear. Mm. The reason why we're having this conversation, so uh, we're just trying to talk about Christmas, the season, how to make sure that your relationships are fine even after the season ends. And if you haven't been doing so well, how to take advantage of the season uh, to make amends. I've got Rashid Amaya from Tichiman. Hello, Rashid, how are you? Hello, Rashid, can you hear me? Hello. All right, how are you? What do you have to share with us? Thanks for calling. I'm very fine. I hope you're also doing good. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Okay. I have a little question that I want to ask the counselor. Okay, we are listening. Okay. Okay, this is my, my girlfriend is asking me about something that I think is, like, I think it's a bit too high for me. You want me to take her out on a show with her as a gift? And so she's also asking me for a thousand cities. Okay. Is going to use to settle some things out. I'm trying to explain things to her, but I'm not too high that she should, should reduce it, but she seems not to understand. Mm. It's still pushing for it. Which I don't know what to do now, but I don't know. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Thank you, Rashid. Would. Uh, uh, give you some, I, I'm sure, suggestions on how to handle this particular one. Elder. Well, I mean, Rashid has said that the lady wants to go for a show and he has agreed to do that. Okay. Now she's asking for a higher... Um, some amount of money. Yeah. That's a thousand CDs, which is beyond his capacity to deliver. If it's beyond you, it's beyond you. Mm. I mean, you are helpless. You can You can give what you don't have. So what you do is 
let her know that you can't give that. You see, sometimes people have a certain impression that says that if a person says no, they mean yes. So press it a little mm, harder mm. and they will cave in. But if you don't have, you don't have. You can go and steal and give. You can go and cut corners to get that money to pay. Mm. So uh, there's a need to ask her, what is she able to contribute? That's, that's a nice one. But, but uh, it's interesting that sometimes people take advantage of seasons to make some demands. Ridiculous demands Really, sometimes. really. I mean, I, we, we've seen this. I don't know if you've seen this going ex viral. Exploitative on, demands. On, on, on social media. Now, every other day, some lady, I mean, it's, it, these are jokes. But sometimes yeah. they reflect what really happened. Yeah. Some lady is asking for a parcel because mm. it's Kwame Nkrumah's birthday or it's <laughs> something else. I, it, it seems to be a culture that we are, we are developing. Everybody's waiting for someone to give them something uh, during the, a festive season. The culture season. of receiving must recede. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> for the culture or habit of giving mm. to be activated. Indeed, it's more blessed to give than to than receive. To receive. Mm. All right. Now we're getting to the season for God so loved the world that he gave. So maybe instead of asking, you should also give something. Uh, Raj Nuruddin in Hohoi joins us. Hello. Good morning, Raj. Good morning, madam. How are you? I'm very fine. You are looking good this morning. Thank <laughs> you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, okay. Please, like, I had a girlfriend. We were dating for almost six years now but he was very faithful i started dating some ladies and her friends convinced her to date someone else but when she dated that person i dated for almost four months she came back to me we settled the case but she told me that she had sex with that person but since then i loved her so much but whenever i think of that i get bored mm. is it good for me to continue or, or I should speak to her. But still, uh, the love is still there. Hmm. The love is still there, you say. Well, yes. I'll be, I'll be yes. getting you some answers. Uh, just just uh, keep keep uh, watching. Okay, you were saying something else? I remember. No, no, no. That is all. Uh, okay, all right. Thank you very much. This one. <laughs> I don't want to be in your shoes at this point. So well, this gentleman who just called you, yes, uh, this is quite a dicey situation, right, isn't it? Right. Yes. You see, love is not just a feeling. It's a decision, it's a commitment you're going to make. And for that reason, don't just be impulsive. Don't be just feeling oriented. Don't be sentimental. Mm. Sit and weigh the decision you're about to make. Okay. Look, sometimes people take those decisions on the spur of the moment because they say feelings knee deep. <laughs> the feelings are overwhelming. Mm. Don't take decisions of a lifetime on the premise of feelings because feelings change. And when they change, the aftermath is horrible, mm. is disastrous sometimes. So Raj needs to sit back and query himself, what am I calling love? Is it real love or is it just some sentimental attachment? Mm. Sometimes it is infatuation. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do without this person. He or she is the only one meant for me. If I leave this person, there is none else who would be like her or him. Mm. These are too, too, too utopic. All right. I mean, th he's, he's definitely hurt. Like, you yes. can hear, dating someone for six years, being... Uh, Which in itself is too long. Okay, being broken up with, gone four months, come back, tell me you've had uh, sex with this other person. It's natural that he should feel hurt. But... but for example, um, is, is it right to say, well, if you feel hurt for maybe a month or two, that's fine. But if it persists, then maybe you should you look see, at... You see, you have a reason to feel hurt when somebody has hurt you. But the question is this, that after you have been hurt, mm. could there be healing? Yes, there could be healing. Mm. All right. Uh, I, I hope you, you've got some answers, Raj. Seydu Muda and Tamale, sorry for keeping you waiting. Seydu, how are you this morning? I'm doing good. 
Please go ahead. What would you like to share with us? Yeah, yeah. I want to contribute to this program. Please on do. Strengthening the relationship with the uh, family. Please do. On a uh, uh, this specific. Yes. Um. There's a trending behavior of our sisters getting into marriages where they always cling to only their husband, bringing a blockade between the extended family and then the, the family, uh, the nuclear family. So, because of this behavior, during festive times where uh, husbands want to train their extended family, the women will not feel comfortable living with the mm. extended family. There is already a blockade there. Okay. So I'm advising my sister to go into marriage with the idea of reunion, but not to depart mm. the nuclear family from the extended family. Mm, thank you very much, Seydou. I'm sure you called in because of uh, our first caller who was talking about yeah. uh, a husband leaving the family. I, I must say this. I've been to a lot of weddings, and I hear the pastors a man shall leave his mother and father and <laughs> cling to his wife. Is that where the problem is coming from? Because we push it down so much and, tr and, and try to cut off, look, a family, stay away. This is between the two of them. And it's, not, it's not about the mother or the father. Woman, she, he's no longer your baby. He's now somebody's, <laughs> you know. Uh, before we answer uh, uh, Seydou's uh, question or comment on his suggestion, let's, let's pick up Abdul. Uh, Samet from Damago. Oh, unfortunately, we've lost him. Apologies, uh, Abdul, Abdul Samet. But let's, let's talk well, about I, that. I, I, Clinging I, I, to your nuclear yes, family alone. I, I, I appreciate so much what Seido Muda has just said. Um, you see, to leave does not connote cut off. Mm. It does not connote abandonment. Because if you abandon your family, you'll be irresponsible. That's plain words. Now, you leave because there are certain apron strings that need to be detached for a while. Mm. It's like the satellite formation. You move out of one orbit, form a new satellite. The satellites interrelate with each other, still. So you cannot be an island. So for those who are having these issues, it's first and foremost misinterpretation of what the narrative of the scripture is. Mm. For this reason, which reason? Because of the consummation of the marriage. He leaves father and mother and, and cleave cleaves. to his mm. wife and they become one, one flesh. So it's a, a three-phase process. Leaving. How do I live? Live financially. I'm not dependent on them. I'm not dependent on them in decision making. I'm not dependent on them in terms of where I stay, where I, I draw my support, sustenance from. That's the essence of leaving. Mm. Stand on your feet, basically. To stand on your feet in poor position to now pursue and not get weary. The person who is being brought into your life as either husband or wife. So you cleave to them. That's attach, affix yourself mm. to them. Until so you become one flesh, where both of you, you sync. You know, I have my iPad. I synchronize my iPad with my Mac notebook. Okay. So that what I have here, I have it at home as well. Mm. Some sync with their cloud. And so they have their data protected in the cloud. So in the event where you use your gadget, you still have access to your data or contacts. So there's a need for people to understand that. An in-law is a relative by marriage. So they become your relative by means of marriage. Mm. They are not enemies. Okay. So you are not an enmity with them. And you should not be picking quarrels with people you consider in-laws. Because see, if you fight your spouse's relations, invariably you end up fighting your spouse. Because mm. they will go back home and connect with their relatives. They will. So very I am a, 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 a thoroughbred advocate of respect for relatives. Mm. But you see, many of the people who are having struggles with relatives of their spouses or the people they are in relationship with is basically because they isolated them prior to the marriage. 
So if I cut you out prior to marriage, now we are married. When you come in, it's a nuisance. Mm. You are an intruder. You are an outsider. So there's, there will be the need for those who are in the prenuptial stage to begin to find creative ways of connecting with their would-be spouses' relations. Mm -hmm. So that there is that friendship, there's that cordiality. There's that. It's not everybody who will be cordial with you. That's a, that's a fact of life. But at least endeavor that by all means, at all costs, I'll win some to my side. Mm. This one. I think we should go on a nationwide tour and maybe sometimes educate the pastors. Because yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the sermons yeah. you hear at weddings and you, you imagine yeah. that this is the kind of counseling that married people are getting and, and they're being told, don't, don't and stay And especially away, where it becomes, it becomes laced with this so-called prophetic mm. directions where they say, so-so and so in your house is this, so-so and so is that. Look, I, I don't know, but from where I sit... Mm -hmm. Simply wearing your full armor as a soldier of Christ is enough. Is the first insulator to the fiery darts of the enemy, the wiles and the schemes of the devil. And then secondly, it gives you the capacity to withstand pressure and tension and overwhelming situations. Unfortunately, for many of us, we are not having God's men, but we are having men who are gods. Mm. And it's, it's so dangerous. So I usually will ask the question, are you a man of God or God amongst men? Because mm. that's the kind of situation we see today. And even though I associate with the faith, sometimes I get so, so saddened. No wonder we have the numbers, but we don't have the influence. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Elder. It's, it, it, 30 minutes is never enough, really, is it? Yeah, <laughs> I wish really. we could go on and on and on. But thank you so much for sharing these it's tips always a with joy. us. A great tips. Uh, for the season, look, you've got to make some amends. Uh, we've shared a lot of ideas. You can go out with your family, go out with your children. Even if you have uh, official engagements, you can take them along. Something different something you know out of the norm so everybody feels loved everybody feels connected just try and make the season very beneficial to yourself and uh to your relatives hopefully uh, we'll be talking about this when we enter 2018 you'll be sharing those experiences with us how you use the season to you know take your relationship to the next level or you know make amends in in situations where you have either disappointed or uh, broken someone's heart, quote unquote. Thank you very much. We had our life coach, Elder Kevin Evans Anand, uh, joining us in sharing, sharing those tips for free. I'll say that again for free. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> and we wish you uh, the very best in, in the season. Same to you, um, the hope. best of the season. Mm. Let's hope for the best in the coming year. And I'm sure that people will start working on their resolutions. Mm -hmm. um, Let's and, see. And usually when we work on the resolutions, we don't add relationships. Please remember to do that. <laughs> hard work. Cue towards, it in. Yeah, hard yeah. work. Re building relationships and maintaining them is a lot of hard work. It that is. I've learned. I have learned that. Thank you very much once again. Well, up next, we'll host ASP Alexander Obing of the Police MTTD. We'll discuss how his outfit seeks to control traffic this U time. If you've been on the streets, my oh my. <laughs> what a lot of traffic it is in town. Well, he'll also be sharing some uh, safety tips and uh, as we, we, we uh, enter the real traffic <laughs> we're going to be expecting this season in the coming days. So don't go away. We'll be back with more.